there! I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and thanks so much for returning to my channel. And as many of you know, I have a viral video right now with 150,000 views so far on the stroke that I had two weeks ago. In fact, it is exactly two weeks ago today. It's noon today on a Tuesday. I had the stroke two weeks ago at 6 a.m. and actually it worked out very well. I got to the hospital quickly. They were able to give me a clot busting drug. I had a stroke up in the right quadrant of my brain and basically after taking that clot buster, everything kind of reversed within a few hours. I was in ICU for two and a half days in the hospital for one more day, but I am doing very well. In my opinion, it doesn't even feel like I ever had a stroke. But this video is not really about that per se. It is about my diet going forward because I have to admit, I have been on a very high fat diet for about the past three years. And this video is really about my decisions on my diet, the best eating plan for me going forward. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at my carnivore diet, wondering if it is dangerous that I've been on such a high fat diet. Actually, I've been on the carnivore kind of off and on, but mostly on for about the past six to seven, eight months. But before that, I was on the keto diet and I really did a very high fat version of keto because I really like fatty meats. And so for about the past three years, I have been on a high fat diet. And I have to admit that when I first had the stroke, my first inclination was to jump to a low fat diet as soon as I can, because that is what traditional cardiology would tell you is the best heart healthy diet. And I certainly don't want to have a stroke again. And in this video, I will be looking at that question. And at the end of the video, I'll be answering, am I going low fat or am I going carnivore? But before we get into that, a little housekeeping, I did want to show you my outfit that I'm wearing today. The outfit and the shoes are all from Amazon, very reasonably priced. And if you're not yet a subscriber, I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. It's totally free. When you click that little bell that just sends you email notifications about my future videos. And I am a mature beauty YouTuber, even though lately it seems like all I can do is medical videos because I seem to be going through the medical ringer, but at least I'm able to share everything I'm going through with you and hopefully bring you some positive benefits. And I have to tell you that something weird is happening in my life right now. And I want to preface this by saying that my mother-in-law Darlene is just fine. She's in ICU right now. I had my stroke two weeks ago, exactly to the day. Sunday morning, Alan and I were taking my parents out for my dad's 89th birthday. And during breakfast, we got a call from Alan's 90 year old mother, Darlene, saying that she had a terrible headache and that she had terrible chest pressure. She said it felt like a man was standing on her chest. It was so painful. And immediately, Alan and I ran out of the restaurant, called 911, got an ambulance to her home, and we got there and the ambulance took her to the hospital and she has been there since Sunday. That's basically all I've been doing for the last two days is being with Darlene, of course, but she's doing very, very well. She is in ICU right now, which is really good because her blood pressure went super high and they're really able to monitor that. They're not sure at this point if it was an actual heart attack or just very high blood pressure, which was causing some dangerous symptoms in her body. And it's funny how God works. Watch what you pray for, because lately I've been praying that God kind of works through me and allows me to kind of be of assistance here on earth in any way I can. And I had the stroke and the stroke video, which helped women identify a stroke early. And if you would like me to do a video, about how to recognize a heart attack early, I would be glad to do that. And actually I've been videoing Darlene and she has agreed to kind of participate in that if you would like to see that video. I think it might be pretty educational, but I will say I am a mature beauty YouTuber and I do have to do my skincare related type job. So I'll have several other videos before I get to that one. Quite honestly, right now, the last thing I want is another medical video because I'm about medical out, I have to admit, and again, Darlene is doing very well. Okay, let's get down to the issue at hand, and I have some notes here because I'm going to be sharing some kind of scientific information with you. And the question is, is the high fat carnivore diet dangerous or is it safe? And after my stroke in the hospital, they gave me this little stroke kit, I guess, and one of the little folders in here says stroke nutrition therapy, and it basically says have a diet that's low in salt, etc. And then it says you need to control your cholesterol levels. And it says here, eat very little saturated fat. 
It says this type of fat can raise the low density lipoprotein or LDL bad cholesterol in your blood. And I actually had my cholesterol levels tested in the hospital, not surprisingly. They ran a ton of tests on me. And basically my overall cholesterol is 234 and normal is 200, so that number is high. And the HDL, the healthy cholesterol, was 78 and that should be greater than 39 so that was very good my healthy cholesterol is really good very robust and my triglycerides were only 59 and they have to be less than 150 so my triglycerides which should be low are very low which is wonderful and the only little problem here is that the ldl the lousy cholesterol is at 144 and they say less than 100 is normal so traditional cardiologists would probably say get yourself on a low-fat diet, get a statin, that kind of thing. And in this video, we'll be looking at the idea of is LDL cholesterol really lousy, as many traditional cardiologist types would have you believe. But before I get into that, and I'm going to bring you a fabulous interview, it is absolutely wonderful. And to me, it was so compelling that it did answer my diet-related questions about what I will eat going forward after the stroke. But for those of you who missed my stroke video, let me give you a brief synopsis of my stroke that happened exactly two weeks ago. But I just had a stroke down in the basement. I was doing my arm weights on a bench, on an incline bench, and I was pushing my arm up in the air. I had just 15 pounds, which is not heavy. And unfortunately, my le left arm started going numb, and then my left leg went numb. I immediately knew it was a stroke, and I ran upstairs, and I said, Alan, get out of bed. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Call 911. But I knew I needed to get upstairs because Alan would have been asleep if I passed out in the basement, and I knew something was quite seriously wrong with me. I'm a girl who, at 65 years old, had a stroke, and I'm going to have my cholesterol taken. I'm, I'm pretty concerned, actually, that I've been on uh, carnivore, on and off for a long time. I don't remember exactly when I started, but mostly on. And boy, I have been eating such high fat, like such high fat. So, you know, who knows? I don't know. And I'm not saying that carnivore did this, but I'm saying that I've been on carnivore. I'm a pretty darn healthy person. I work out like five mornings a week. Um, I'm pretty healthy, have a decent weight. I don't smoke. I don't drink. Had, haven't had a drink in 23 years. I don't do drugs. <laughs> There should be no reason, I would think, that I would have a stroke if I have high cholesterol, which I suspect I will, and they just took my blood to measure my cholesterol. So I'll find that out later this morning. But if I have high cholesterol, I'm going back to the standard, whatever they tell me is a good diet for stroke patients. It's, it's easy to theoretically argue the benefits of all these different eating plans, but when you have had a stroke, it really makes you look at the fact, do I want high fat diet or do I not? And um, basically it's, it's very confusing, I have to say. And as you can tell in the hospital, I was extremely confused. And quite honestly, certainly right after I had the stroke for the first day, day and a half, I was convinced that I needed to listen to that stroke brochure and get myself back to a low fat diet. And before I get on with this video, I did want to tell you one thing, and that is that before the end of my stay, I was there three days, I did find the reason for my stroke. And the reason actually probably had nothing at all to do with diet. Although I really do want to have a heart healthy diet going forward, because the studies show if you have one stroke, you know, often you will have a second stroke, which was not something I wanted. But the reason for the stroke is that I have a tiny birth defect in my heart, which is a little tiny hole in my heart. And what the doctors think happened is a week before I had my stroke, I was taking a long plane trip. It was like six hours and I didn't have compression stockings on. Now I know you should always wear compression stockings anytime you fly, sit for a long time, anytime you're in a car for a long time, that sort of thing. So basically he thought a blood clot formed in my leg and then it went to my heart and usually in people without the hole in the heart, that little clot would be filtered through the lungs and broken down into small pieces and it shouldn't be harmful. Well, in my case, the clot they believe went through that hole in my heart, went right to my brain and caused the stroke. 
And I do want to say before I get into the meat of this video, if you would like to know more specific information from like Dr. Ken Berry, who is a huge expert in the carnivore diet and its effects on our health, let me know because I would love to send him my medical record from that hospital stay and get his thoughts. Okay, let's get down to this. And after my stroke, I started out researching the whole area of diet and strokes on YouTube and I was looking for the best heart healthy diet for when you've had a stroke. And amazingly enough, a video came up from a Dr. Nadir Ali, Nadir Ali. And it was one of the best videos I've ever seen that talks about the fact that yes, low carb diets, high fat diets do increase LDL cholesterol, but he believes that is actually a very good thing. And I'll be sharing his interview in the video in just a few moments. But first I wanted to direct you to the channel which featured Dr. Ali's video. And this channel is wonderful. It's Dr. Morgan Nolte, and she is a board certified geriatric physical therapist. In other words, she helps people in their 80s and 90s, you know, improve their physical fitness. And she sees a lot of walkers, a lot of canes. She sees a lot of the effects of lifestyle when we get into our later years. And I have to admit, we recently had Darlene's 90th birthday. We had a little birthday party at the church. It was filled. I mean, it was an amazing party. And in fact, I'm going to have a video about her birthday party because in it, I think you'll see some wonderful tips on happiness as we age. But anyway, it was kind of like a sea of walkers coming in. I hate to admit that. And I told my husband, Alan, I don't want to be 88 years old and on a walker. I really don't want to be. And that is what Dr. Nolte's channel is all about. She actually provides very good scientific research on a lot of areas that contribute to her healthy aging. And I totally urge you to go visit her channel and look around there. She has great information. And specifically, even though I'm going to be sharing some information from Dr. Ali, I really think it is worth your time to go to her channel. I'll link it below. I'll link that video below. You need to go there and watch the whole video because quite honestly, before I saw that video, I was still thinking maybe low fat was the best option for me. And after watching that video, I showed everyone in my family that video because it is so compelling that a carnivore high fat diet really is optimal human nutrition. Now let's get into the interview with Dr. Nadir Ali. And Dr. Ali is a board certified interventional cardiologist. And what that means is that he specializes in that operation where you go up through the groin or the surgeon does, and he gets to the heart and he either clears out blockages or installs stents, something like that. And Dr. Ali is a true expert at this procedure and he's been practicing in the Houston area for more than 30 years. But Dr. Ali says that in his cardiology practice, he was getting intensely frustrated because he kept using these traditional techniques and giving out the traditional recommendations and often he saw patients actually getting worse. So I found myself being extremely good at opening blood vessels of the heart and I found myself being very disappointed in working in the office seeing patients because I felt that working in the office, I am not able to help improve their lives. Their blood pressure got worse despite many blood pressure medicines. Their diabetes got worse. They became more obese. I could reduce their cholesterol with medicines, but I was always a cholesterol skeptic. I didn't think that cholesterol was really the culprit in heart disease. And I found that I would give patients cholesterol medicines and drop their cholesterol and yet their heart disease would progress quite dramatically. I think that what you just said was a really important point. And I want people to hear that again. And you said that you prescribed statins for heart disease and their cholesterol came down, but their heart disease became worse. Now you may wonder why Dr. Ali went from traditional medical cardiology practice to really believing that high fat is the way to go. And Dr. Ali is a carnivore, so he is an extreme low carb person. He's a carnivore just like I am, and now Alan is too. And here's a little background on Dr. Ali and how we got into this kind of unconventional way of thinking that a high fat diet is actually better for your heart. And here's his story. He was a very hard working interventional cardiologist and in his 20s he rode bikes five or six times a week. In fact, he kept riding bikes all through his career, but in his 20s he was very able to easily keep his weight at like 150. 
he was really fit really physically fit but a bit later in his 30s he was still bike riding he was still eating kind of the low-fat diet and his weight started to balloon within about a year he went from 150 pounds he ballooned up to 180 pounds he was not feeling good his health markers were getting off and he thought what is going on here and being a bicyclist he watched this one tour de france winner and he was reading about this guy i don't remember his name but in the article dr ali was reading it said that this tour de france winner was a low carb athlete and so he started looking into what the guy was eating and he thought heck i'll just give that a try and i don't know if he first went to keto or carnivore now he is carnivore but he changed his eating to a very high fat diet and within about three months he had lost all but 10 pounds of that weight he had very easily gone from 180 to 160 and very soon thereafter he ended up at his optimal weight of 150. and he felt so good and looked so good that he thought you know why shouldn't i be trying this in my heart patients i've been very frustrated that i've been telling them to eat low carb and get movement and they just get heavier and heavier and sicker and sicker and they get pre-diabetes diabetes etc and he thought well i will give this a try with my patients and then something clicked in my brain i said if it's so easy for me to do and do something like this, why should I not try this in my patients? And then when I started trying that in people who were 70, 80, even 90 years old, I saw that they lost about 30 to 50 pounds over a six month period. I saw that they reduced their diabetic medications or got off of them. I saw several of them get off their wheelchair drop their walkers they had a reduction in their blood pressure medicine so that was like a moment in which it was like a no look back moment i said i've done something wrong for the last 20 odd years <laughs> and now i should move forward by spending more time in the office and counseling patients wow. and learning more and more about the local lifestyle that was the impetus for me for starting my business, because I knew if I could help other people do this, I could help them prevent the need for a geriatric physical therapist. You know, you're saying they got rid of their wheelchairs and their walkers. And it's just really beautiful to see that power of nutrition and lifestyle and preventative medicine. And although the high fat diet approach in cardiology is pretty rare and largely frowned upon, Dr. Ali found that the patients on this high fat diet did amazingly well. When I started putting patients on a low carb lifestyle, I noticed that their insulin levels went down, their blood sugar levels went down, their inflammation went down, their triglycerides, which is fat in the bloodstream, went down, their good cholesterol went up, but the LDL came up. And that's exactly what happened to me on the carnivore diet. All of my cholesterol numbers were better than ever, except my LDL, which actually got higher, but Dr. Ali says LDL actually has some amazing benefits. To neutralize bacteria and viruses, you need the LDL. So it's something that is fighting infections. Number two, it dampens inflammation. When the body is inflamed, the LDL has several antioxidants through which it can dampen inflammation. And I can tell another easy example that people can relate to. If you take mm -hmm. 100 diabetics age 50 years of age, and you weight match them with another 50 people who are not diabetic, who will have a higher LDL? So would it surprise you that the diabetic people will have a lower LDL and the non-diabetic people will have a higher LDL? Yes, that, yet, that surprises me, yes. There's this huge cognitive dissonance that's going on in people because they think that they're trying to live this healthy lifestyle and they see those other numbers improving and they're like, what's wrong with my LDL? And their doctor says, you need to go on a statin. And they're thinking, I did this so I didn't have to go on a medication. Then Dr. Ali brought up the HUNT trial, which studied 50,000 patients on just normal diets, on a variety of diets, 50,000 patients in Europe. So when you go into the demographic data and you take 50,000 patients in Europe, followed in the HUNT trial for 10 years, you took 50,000 patients followed for 10 years. And when you looked at, you now these people are not fasting, these people are not on a low carb diet. And when you look at cholesterol levels in men and you put them into high, low and medium, I mean, high, medium and low, 
there is actually a trend towards lower mortality, higher the cholesterol, which makes no sense. These people have high cholesterol and yet they are dying at a lower rate. But what I was also wanted to point out is that when you looked at women in the Hunt trial, in women, it was extremely clear. Higher the LDL or higher the cholesterol, lower the mortality. And Dr. Ali would say that, for instance, in my case, higher LDL is actually good and means I would live longer. Then he goes into talking about the Leiden trial. There is a town of Leiden in Netherlands. In that town, they took people between 85 and 95 years of age, and they followed them for 10 years. And they divided them into high cholesterol over 250, middle cholesterol around 200, and a low cholesterol below 200. The people with the highest cholesterol had the lowest mortality and the lowest cancer risk and the lowest infection risk. Older people die of infections. Higher cholesterol was associated with lower pneumonias. The people with the lowest cholesterol had higher mortality, higher cancer risks, higher infection. And this study was followed for 10 years. What Dr. Ali is saying is that when they looked at the mortality rates of those 85 to 90 year olds, those with the highest LDL lived longer, had lower cancer rates, and actually had fewer infections, which is very important in later life. Then Dr. Ali goes on to discuss a study which actually discusses stroke risks, and he says a higher LDL is actually protective against strokes. Take World War II Japan and take World War II United States. The incidence of strokes in Japan was much higher compared to the United States. The cholesterol levels in Japan were two thirds that of the United States. So they were lower, United States was higher. As Japan became affluent, they started eating Kobe beef, sashimi, a lot of animal food, their cholesterol levels started rising. What happened to the stroke rate? The stroke rate started mm. falling off a cliff because I tend to believe that the LDL cholesterol is a firefighter. It's gone there to help heal the blood vessel that is damaged from inflammation, from high blood pressure, from insulin resistance, from metabolic dysfunction, and that it's really not the culprit that caused the plaque buildup. And I really appreciate the fact that you're kind of going against conventional wisdom here and that we're building this resource that somebody can confidently live with a high LDL cholesterol if all of the other numbers that we talked about are going in the right direction. In that interview, Dr. Ali goes on to say that statins don't work and he shows very compelling research. And it takes a long time to explain that, so I won't put that here. But if you would like to see probably the best information I've seen about why statins don't work and the easiest to understand, then please follow that link and watch his entire interview. Now, drum roll, please. I'm about to announce if I'm going to stay on carnivore or if I'm going to go low fat although you probably have some idea about that. But I again wanted to thank Dr. Morgan Nolte for allowing me to take snippets from Dr. Ali's interview. It was absolutely wonderful. And yes, no surprise, I am staying on the carnivore diet. And I have to admit, before I saw Dr. Ali's video, I wasn't totally convinced. But after seeing that video, I feel that in terms of my own personal health, you have to do what you want to do. But in terms of my own personal health, I love being on the carnivore diet. My IBS is almost non-existent. I have a lot more energy. I have a lot more of a general happy feeling. I really like the carnivore diet and I now feel it's safe. And again, if you would like me to reach out to Dr. Ken Berry and get his take on all this, I would love to do that. Just leave me a request in the comment section. Well, at this point in the video, I normally leave you with a little thought for the day, but I have to admit that I had quite a bit of footage from when I was in the hospital. So at this point in the video, I'll just share some random thoughts I had while in the hospital after my stroke. I never thought that at 65 years old, which I consider young, that um, I would be having a stroke. And it's funny because one of the nurses said, um, the age at which they see someone come into the hospital for a first stroke or a first heart attack is from the age of 55 to 65. So ladies, if you're over 50, you're right in there 
um, in that kind of dangerous zone. But increasingly, younger and younger people here in America are coming into the hospital. Even kids in their 20s are coming into the hospital with heart attacks and strokes. I mean, it's not every day, you know, diabetes, but that we're getting less and less healthy as we go along. It, it all sounds kind of theoretical until you've had an event like I have, which is the stroke. And that really does make you wake up and say, you know, how do you want the quality of your life to be from now on? And what measures are you going to take? Here's Dylan. He came to visit me at noon. Hi, Dylan. Hey, <laughs> There's Allie. Yeah. And this is the wonderful meal they gave me. And I'm supposedly on a heart-healthy diet. And this is what they always say about hospital food, that it makes absolutely no sense. Because this could be like carnivore from two days ago. That's on nobody's good healthy diet, greasy french fries. And broccoli, yeah, I guess if you're on keto or paleo, that could be good. That's, that's on a heart-healthy diet, I would say. And then I do have pineapple, which is great. But then I have orange fat-free sherbet, which does look lovely. And you guys, I am so hungry. It was supposedly gluten-free, but I did have to remove the buns, which is okay. But I mean, that's the state of hospital food in America. After they gave me the clot buster, I was pretty much back to normal smiling within a couple of hours, which was crazy amazing. So thank you, God. I'm so happy for my total perfect health, my return to perfect total health. And Lord, if there's anything I need to learn from you about the situation, let that happen. Lord, if there's any way I can educate other women about the situation, then please lead me and direct me to the women that need to hear my message. In your name I pray, amen. And thank you to all of you for being with me. Bye.